Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your weekly reading for February 5th to the 11th. This is for Pisces and Pisces Rising. And we're going to jump right into it because it's a loaded week. It is a very busy week. Now, um, I know I dropped these readings on Wednesdays before the actual week. So if you are watching it the week before the weekend on uh, February 2nd to the 4th, I have to I have to tell you something, Pisces. You're going to love this weekend, okay? On the 2nd, just real quickly, Mercury will sextile Neptune. This is really important because during the week, Mars will sextile Neptune. Uh, and you're going to feel it. Now, Mercury sextiling Neptune is so nice absolutely nice first we know that mercury is uh at this point uh uh, uh in capricorn and so i really love this for you uh because mercury sextiling neptune neptune is in your sign i think that you know that uh so there is a sense of like really just harmonizing with friends and family and your social network right now but really helping others i mean neptune you know in pisces it, i'm it there is this element of like spirituality and intuition and you know a compassion and just healing there's a sense of like healing with the words with the way that you communicate you could have some really really nice meditative energy around this time as well but uh you may find yourself uh your intuition really heightened and i really absolutely love this for you now on the fourth mercury will move into aquarius mercury is exalted in aquarius and this is going to be a big deal because all this Aquarius energy that we're moving into and you know Pluto's in Aquarius the sun's in Aquarius we're in Aquarius season it's all activated in your 12th house of intuition the subconscious I mean I would not be surprised by the way if you already knew like the, the outcome of this spread before I even get to it I mean there's very psychic energy for y'all but you know Mercury moving into Aquarius is like I said exalted it does really well in Aquarius Mercury being all about communication and logic and thinking uh and in Aquarius being very forward thinking now Aquarius is very future for it so uh but it's also like you know speaking intelligently and having these really intelligent uh conversations that are where you feel a lot you're really confident uh and it, you're gonna start feeling it uh in a way where there's this depth okay and the reason I say that is because on Monday when we kick off the week Mercury will conjunct Pluto all right so remember Mercury's in Aquarius and Pluto's in Aquarius and this is just a really really intense aspect so they're remember there's a lot of power in words and you may feel it this time and I want you to use this aspect in your favor if you have to have an important conversation remember there's that sense of empowerment that comes with Pluto all right and then there is that level of depth that comes with uh even with just with Pluto and so remember this is a really strong conjunction you could be thinking very deeply at this time you could be having a lot of dreams that uh you know I would pay attention to them okay they may be sending you messages. You could be having a lot of intuitive downloads. You could be uncovering a lot of secrets and a lot of truths that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that may be very satisfying for you, but use this aspect. Okay. It is a powerful aspect now, and it is the only time this year we'll have it. So I, I really, really like this for you. Again, it's a very powerful, um, now on the seventh Venus will try and Uranus. I, 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 I can't even begin to tell you how big of a day this is for you. First of all, this is an amazing aspect. Trines are incredibly auspicious. Venus, all about love, all about uh, uh, romance and, and beauty, and but it's also money, uh, creativity. Venus represents a lot of things. Now, Uranus is the planet of breakthroughs and innovation, and so there could be some big breakthrough that you have here uh, in those areas of your life, but what I love about this is that Venus is still in Capricorn. Uh, it's your 11th house, your social network, groups you belong to, your you know community, even social media, if that's a thing for you, but it's also like your hopes and wishes and dreams so you could be having a lot of conversations about your future what you want your goals and long-term goals so i really love this and you could find some breakthroughs in this area that just happened for you especially with love and and, and romance is uh, a, a big thing here for sure um it's also a time where you could actually find like yourself gravitating toward something new like a new hobby new love interest maybe ascending in this new level in your in, in in your life um in a relationship and it can be career too and it doesn't even have to be career or love you know this is you know if, if, if even if you're like retired you could find something that you're really truly 
passionate about, something that really moves your heart, something that you really desire like at this time. So remember, a lot of creative energy uh, on this day, but the same day Mars will sextile Neptune. And that's why I feel like you're truly going to feel this. You're truly going to feel this. Um, again, Mars is still in Capricorn, all right? Your 11th house, but then Neptune is in your sign. And, you know, so much spirituality, so much spiritual energy that's happening this time. Even, like, there's almost a sense of, like, this, you know, fantasy that you have, this fantasy that you are now putting into, like, this reality, that you're, you're world building the things that you've been wanting i i i love this week for you very very uh spiritually active we you find you 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 will likely find yourself very intuitive as well and even like driven toward like a higher purpose like knowing your higher purpose and you know uh really you know i've been saying in other signs it's like it's like when you look at someone in the eyes and you can see deep down in their soul. I mean, I feel like you'll have moments like this. And we actually didn't have Mars excelling Neptune last year. So really take advantage of this day. Now on the 8th, the sun will square Uranus. Now I really want you to pay attention to this. I mentioned this in your February forecast. This is an aspect where it is where it, things may start getting a little bit challenging. Um, remember, there's a lot of Aquarius energy, all right? But then Uranus, the ruling planet for Aquarius, is actually in Taurus in your uh, third house of communication. So remember, Mercury, how active is Mercury this week? Very active. Mercury, the planet of communication that rules the third house. So really, really, uh, uh, I would just say that there may be some, you know, conversations that uh, come up that you didn't expect. So I would just say, just be aware of this. All right. And you may start feeling a buildup because like I mentioned, Mercury or in your February forecast, Mercury will square Uranus next week. So that's the sun and Mercury square Uranus. All right. Now on Friday, we get to the big new moon in Aquarius. Really nice. Really lovely. I feel like y'all are just going to have these really big moments of clarity and just uh, uh, especially moving forward in this new direction. I mean, there's a lot of newness happening in your life now. However, the one thing is that on the 8th, the sun will square Uranus. Remember, Uranus is Aquarius's ruling planet. So this new moon, there could be something unexpected again that comes up that you're just like, oh, I did not see that coming. All right. So just be very aware. But it's it's like your intuition is going to be like, is it through the roof? It's going to be through the roof on the roof. Now, here's the thing about this new moon. I love this new moon. I just, you know, just remember the sun squaring Uranus the day before, but the day after Mercury will square Jupiter. All right. So you see that this new moon is sandwiched by these two squares. Now, Mercury squaring Jupiter. This is a point where you may have a lot of different ideas. Like, remember, your mind's going to be there's going to be a lot going on and uh, even your intuition and and, and even your, your your psychic abilities for sure. Uh, but there is a sense of like. On this day, Mercury squaring Jupiter, there may be a lot of ideas you have. A lot of you may be curious about a lot of things, too. Your mind could be going in a lot of different directions. It's just a good day to just focus a little bit because that's going to serve you really well. But as you can see, very loaded week. Let's go ahead and see what's going on for you. Again, that Mercury conjuncting Pluto is really big. Venus finding Uranus is really big. We have a new moon in Aquarius. Really big week. So Pisces, let's see what's going on for you. Uh, again, this is for Pisces and Pisces rising. If you want to read for your moon and your Venus. If you do know uh, those placements in your birth chart, uh, know that we do have a new moon this week. And Venus is very active this week. So it might give you a lot more insight into uh, what's happening for you. But let's go ahead and get started, uh, Pisces. Uh, let's see what's going on for you for February 5th to the 11th. Pisces, like uh, I do, a, I didn't say this earlier, I do a traditional cultic grass spread. Really does offer the best overview, in my opinion. If we need to pull clarifiers, we will pull clarifiers. Secondly, Pisces, you know I love you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, wow, you are definitely gonna go through it. Look at you. Look at you. Okay, I don't want you to feel uninspired this week. That is one of the biggest messages coming through, okay? And there is something that you, you are gonna be... Um, uh, you definitely are gonna be feeling very intuitive, feeling like, you know, listening to your inner voice, 
being in touch with your pineal gland up here, uh, your third eye, your sixth sense. Uh, and you can see that here with the high priestess. Okay. And so really hold on to that energy. Like I said, it's going to be a very spiritual week. Okay. And so I want you to, it's almost like you're going to feel in your element too. And so that's why I like the reason the high priestess came up, all that intuition here, all that intuition. And, uh, you see that, you know, the sliver of the moon at her feet, you see, you know, even her headdress, by the way, the different phases of the moon. So a lot of emotional energy here, a lot of intuitive energy is the, the, bigger uh, message though. Um, so really hold on to that. Trust your intuition throughout the weekend. I feel like, again, a lot of y'all are just going to be feeling it. I feel like a lot of y'all are just going to like, it's just going to naturally uh, uh, come out where, where uh, you know, when you're in touch with your intuition, it's almost like everything makes sense. You don't question anything. You don't fear anything. You do not like worry about anything. So again, hold on to that energy. That's going to be very nice for you. Now, you also got the devil. You got the devil in the heart of your spread. So very interesting here. Um, the devil represents everything you think the devil would represent. But the biggest thing that's coming up is a relationship or even a friendship. Friendship could be a big thing that is happening. Um, but I just don't want you to feel uninspired. It looks like something's got to go. Um, look at your entire spread. I'm uh, Something definitely has to go because it does seem like there may be like um, something holding you back and something that's making you feel like uh, uh, it's 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 not fulfilling you emotionally, and so the devil is you know vices, uh, addictions, bad behaviors, even pessimistic thinking. Remember, I said you're gonna have a lot of activity in your twelfth house, okay? So the subconscious, but then also with Mercury being very very active, okay, and then Uranus and Jupiter. Uranus is very active this week in your third house of communication and logic and thinking. It's conscious too, so you have a lot going on this week recognize what is it that I need to address and, 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 and let go. You see the two people here chained to the devil. All right. The chains are loose. They can break free anytime they want, but it does seem, it feels like, you know, uh, it's almost like a draining energy, almost like energy vampire kind of energy, uh, to recognize what it is and get to a place where you're comfortable. Like I got to kick this to the curb. I gotta, you know, and it, and again, it can be a, uh, uh, I, did I say friendship? It could be a friendship. And actually, you know, the devil is Capricorn. And to remember what I said earlier, how Capricorn rules your 11th house of your social network, okay? So it can be uh, in communities and organizations you belong to and, and whatnot. So it can be recognizing, like, maybe this friend of mine is toxic or maybe this work environment is toxic and it were my boss or so it's just something there something there um that that you may have to recognize and 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 just i gotta figure this out uh and have some resolve here and break free from you know the these chains uh it could even be like a neighbor too but you did get the page of cups in your challenge area and so that's you. There's so much uh, Pisces energy in the Page of Cups. A lot of, you know, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, but still there is a lot of Piscean energy with the Page of Cups. And this is someone, I love the Page of Cups. He is such a dreamer. He's so intuitive. He is up. He wears his heart on his sleeve. I love the Page of Cups. Uh, 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 very interested in new things uh, uh, where he wants to follow his bliss. All right. And so in your challenge area, I just don't want you to feel uninspired this week. There could be something where you may feel that there is a little bit of like, uh, 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 I'm just going to sit at home, order Ben and Jerry's and uh, binge watch, you know, love is blind all week and, 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 uh, put my creative projects aside and put this aside. No, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You have a lot, a lot that's happening for you this week. And the reason why you have the four of cups. Okay. You have the four of cups in your, um, crown. And so this is very, very interesting. And I do want you to pay attention to this uh, because with the page of cups and your challenge area, the devil in the heart of your spread. And then also, yeah, you saw that the tower in the root of your spread. Look up your cross. OK, so there is a sense of like this week where you may be bored with something. And I say that because 
boredom is attributed to this card and it could be something that you're just like look at him he's sitting there with three full cups the universe is offering him the hand of spirit is offering him another cup he can see it it's right in its eye level it's right in his face but look at his reaction he is literally crossing off his heart. And so there is a sense of like, there may be something this week that you could just be bored with again, um, or, you know, apathy is associated with this card as well. But at the end of the day, it is just testing your gratitude. It's testing your gratitude. And so you may feel that this week about something that's happening in your life where you're like, okay, I... This may be happening and it's putting me in this headspace where I am uh, focusing a little bit more on these, whatever's holding me back. There are a lot of shadow work here too, right? And especially with, you know, what's happening with you, Pluto and Aquarius and, and whatnot. But uh, there is something that you may have to recognize this week and bring your energy level to like a high frequency really get to that point where you're still holding on to that high priestess energy and really be in tune with your intuition you know cups also represent intuition as well and so really uh Thinking outside the box. Remember, that's what Mercury and Aquarius is. Thinking outside the box if you need to as well, especially with the Page of Cups in your challenge area. So, uh, Because there is a lot of creative energy with the Page of Cups. Uh, but with the Four of Cups, again, thinking about gratitude. I mean, gratitude is among the highest vibrations and the law of attraction. And you always want to be aware of that. You always want to be attracting uh, uh, the things that you want in your life. And again, vibrating at a really, really high frequency. Okay. So this is testing your gratitude. So even in like situations where you feel like things are uh, like, it feels like sludge or things that ha not happening for me or you know that's part of the devil remember i said the devil is pessimistic thinking so even when you're thinking thoughts like why is this happening for me to me or why you know nothing good ever happens that's the devil energy okay that is pessimistic thinking it is you know vibrating at a low frequency everything is made of energy the thoughts in your head the words that come out of your mouth the the, the things that you write right so this is it. This is going to be a testing week, is what I'm trying to say, because you do also have the tower. You have the tower in the root of your spread. So remember, um, Mars is in Capricorn this week. This card is attributed to Mars. You have a Capricorn card right in the heart of your spread. So again, that may be something with a friend or a group you belong to or something social that uh, it, it, there could be something that may be a little bit sideways all right and you may have to understand that it was meant to happen if it does happen i want you to recognize it all right because the tower card yes it's like you can see it's like this chaotic destructive scenario that's painted here but the tower card it doesn't happen to you it happens for you all right what comes after the tower the star look at the card the tower is still standing like there's uh the lightning bolt striking the crown off the tower the lightning bolt i mean that's what we see in the tree of life right the flashing sword the flashing light so there's a little bit of like uh you know uh you know fate involved in in this card with that's aligned with the tree of life in terror right and the king is represent or the sorry the king the crown is representing ego so it's kind of like there is something that it's like you have to let go and it might hurt your ego a little bit it may be something that you have to recognize to reach this higher frequency of gratitude and it's even just like having those moments of like even like for me for instance like if there is like if i have a challenging moment like i can move into that low energy frequency or i can choose to say okay well, I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful that I have, you know, uh, Netflix. <laughs> I'm grateful that, you know, I that, that I have opportunities. I know that some people out there don't even get opportunities. So really, it's that shift, all right? It's that shift in working with those energies. And hey, you have the seven of cups in your future. So speaking of opportunities, there you go, all right? So 
just know what you want. Know what you want. It looks like there's going to be a big change this week, but you're going to have to allow that change with the devil in the heart of your spread. Hold on to the high priestess energy. Trust your intuition. You will be very spiritually active this week, but with the seven of cups in your future, you can see this card. There's a lot of like smoke and mirrors and, and you know, a little bit of illusion and whatnot. You've got to know what you want at the end of the day. Like, what does my heart truly want? What can I like? What is the noise that I can cut through so I can really focus on the thing that I want that is going to fulfill me emotionally? All right. Um, and there is also, you know, the fact that there are seven cups that exist in this card indicates there are opportunities ahead in your future. Just know where you want to put your energy. Now, Pisces, let's get to your stuff. Pisces, wow, this is a deep and like I'm not surprised again with what's happening with with Neptune very active this week. All right, that is going to be a big thing, and then all this uh, you know a shift in Aquarius for you, uh, which is your twelfth house. All right, and then as you know, we are moving into Pisces season with a lot of plans moving into Pisces. So there is a sense of like a lot of you energy like what do I want what is the role that I play who am I what are my goals like things like that identity um so uh wow <laughs> Pisces oh my goodness um I didn't even get to say my own lines but let's just let's keep going this is okay so you got the world all right so uh there is a sense of <sighs> It's almost like there you want something to end, okay? There is, you know, where it falls in your stuff. You know, the world is the end of the major arcanas, right? So you can see the dancing figure here. You know, uh, there is a sense of, like, achievement here. There's this, you know, we've come to the end, right? The end of the the, the, the fool's journey, right? The, the, even the wreath and the garland here, uh, there's uh, referencing the zero. It looks like a zero, right? So it's referencing the fool, right? So at the end, there comes this new beginning. Uh, there is a sense that I'm getting, looking at your spread, that there is something that you want to it's almost like you want to come to one, the end of one chapter of your life and move on to another. And so remember, have the, like, be laser focused on what is that thing? What is that thing with the seven of cups in your future? All right. Now, you also got the ten of wands. And so, yeah, there is something you really, really, really want to come to an end for something new to begin. Ten is the end of the suit. One zero equals one. All right. So remember that new beginning here. But um, there is a lot of burden that comes with this card. A lot of like just taking on a lot too. Uh, sometimes in a sense of like to distract yourself from the things that you do have to face. And, you know, again, there's a lot of like like facing your truth, uh, especially with that Mercury conjuncting Pluto. Uh, this It's just so there's this depth to it but again this is going to be uh and this card by the way very it's all about your passions right we're talking about wands here so uh, this fiery spirit with the wands are the fire suit so your passions or even ideas and creativity but there is a heavy connotation to work uh in career um in enterprise with the wands now this is a sagittarius card and so Sagittarius rules your 10th house of career. So for a lot of y'all, it could be something career related. Again, something that you may recognize. Do I have, do I, what do I, what's the decision that I want to make moving forward? Um, and then you get the five of cups, but where, where it falls in your, um, in your stuff, it, it really is just saying that, um, Two, well, two things, actually. The first message is like, there's this sense of this week where there may be something that um, you may not do based out of not wanting to regret something, okay? So just recognize that. Remember, it seems like there is something that you may have to let go. Now, the other thing is that there is this like, almost like hope that whatever you're moving toward, you don't regret. And so... Really, again, when you identify exactly what you want and you put all your energy toward that, you're going to be fine. You're going to be good. Um, and I and you have the eight of pentacles in your final outcome. I feel like that was like a big thing for anyway. But you so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Eight of pentacles. This is really great. This is someone who is laser focused toward the future. Exactly what 
your spread is saying. Let some, there's something that needs to go. It feels like there is something that may just happen too, especially with the Uranus having these squares, right? Remember on the 8th, uh, the sun squaring Uranus. So Uranus is all about surprises and, and even breakthroughs though. Remember, Uranus is also breakthroughs, but it seems like there's something that's going to happen here. And uh, it's going to have you a little bit driven toward your goals and uh, even like in this long term sense, but also like your legacy at the end of the day. You know, he has removed himself from the village to work on these pentacles, being laser focused and and, and not distracted and really going toward his goals and, his, and, and ultimately his legacy and being able to buy a house or a village or an island, whatever he wants, whatever it's the pentacles, right? So money and wealth, it could be a big thing for you now. It could be something that you're focused on. Remember your North node did move into Aries anyway. So you're going to feel that all year long, this sense of like, uh, financial, uh, like stability. Okay. It could be a big thing for you and money could be a big thing for you, but it, it there is something that is going to be, uh, happening this week for sure. You're going to feel it. Uh, and it's, again, how you work with those energies. How much time do we have? Do you want me to do a... Cl I'll do a clarifier for you. Yeah, you... Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> You're good. You just have to let something go. And the reason why I say that is because, remember, you have the devil in the heart of your spread, but now you have judgment in your future clarifying the seven of cups judgment is all about having this like rebirth this spiritual awakening no, like i know who i am i know what i want i feel good spiritually i'm ready to move forward i'm looking to have this meaningful life experience once you know what you want you're gonna you're you're great you see you have an archangel here if archangel gabriel blowing the trumpet okay only card in tarot that has this huge connotation to sound. What is sound? Sound is vibrations. What is vibrations? It's healing. Okay. So this is absolutely really great. And uh, the judgment card uh, is, is attributed to Pluto. Remember Pluto moving into Aquarius is a big deal. It's in your 12th house. So really like that intuition. It, you're definitely going to feel it this week. It's going to be very heightened, but use it to know what is it the thing that, uh, I uh, even like there is self-sabotage energy that does live in the 12th house. And remember, we have the sun and Pluto and Mercury in Aquarius in your 12th house. All right. And then now you have the devil in the heart of your spread, which there it exists there, too. And so if there is something that you may be doing that you feel like could be self like, you know, putting yourself where you can't move forward and it makes you feel uninspired or you feel uninspired and uh have that moment to recognize it um and something may just happen anywhere where you do uh but again there are opportunities about you just need to know exactly where you want to put that energy and then boom you have this angelic moment um and you're gonna be fine uh, you want me to do one more pisces let's do one more you have the eight of swords queen of cups interesting Pisces yeah so it is worth showing up because again you will be in your head a lot as I said earlier this in in this reading and now it's showing now the other thing that I said with that self-sabotage energy uh, with the devil here with all this activity in your 12th house the eight of swords is uh we call it like the self-victim card like she put herself here she she's blindfolded bound surrounded by swords thinking she's protecting herself when the reality is she's built this like uh prison like especially up here right swords are the mental suit and so you are going to be in your head a lot but do it like in a way if you are like unroot things let things go but again a lot of um uh you see her feet are free okay so remember with the double chains are loose with here her feet are free she can walk out anytime she wants get to the point where if if you feel that you need to like where you're comfortable taking off that blindfold and then you are going to be fine you have the queen of cups i mean talk about intuitive the queen of cups is the most intuitive queen in fact to a psychic level it's 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 uncanny you can even see when she looks at her cup 
it's almost like she's like gazing at this crystal ball. But, you know, there's a lot of like emotional depth, emotional intelligence, a lot of love here with the Queen of Cups. I do say she's like the Princess Diana of Tarot. And the Queen of Cups is Cancer. It is, you know, a Cancer ruled card. And so uh, Cancer for you actually, Pisces, rules your fifth house. So not only like fellow water sign there, but fifth house is all about pleasure and love and, and, and even romance and family, children, creativity, self-expression, but very heightened intuition and that self-love comes through, okay? That self-love, once you let some things go, once you let, you definitely, something's got to go. Um, Pisces, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, if you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments, let me know what's going on, tell me what's going on. We're about to, next week, by the way, we have a lot more happening. Then we have Mars moving into Mars and Venus moving into Aquarius. We have Venus conjuncting Pluto. We have Mars conjuncting Pluto. Another big week, okay? And this is all of. Uh, and next week we actually move into your birthday season. All right, the sun moves into your sign. That's going to happen on the 18th. But we'll talk about that next week. Thanks so much, Pisces. I will see you next week. Okay, bye bye.